I'm Barry Johns, and this is Studio Talk. And today I'm going to talk about RME interfaces. But before I get started there, I'm going to give you a little bit brief history about the types of interfaces I've used up until this point. Uh, you know, I've been a long time Pro Tools HD, HDX user. Um, uh, I'm no longer in that particular platform, but because of that, you're kind of forced into high-end interfaces. And once you kind of go there, you start to really appreciate uh, what you're getting for that money. Uh, you know, I've used interfaces anywhere from the Digidesign 192 I.O. Uh, to Avid I.O., as well as Apogee interfaces, uh, a Lynx Aurora 16, uh, most recently the Avid Carbon, and then today I'm on RME. And, and so I, I, I understand, I feel like I understand, uh, you know, what are the subtle differences between uh, a lot of interfaces in this particular price category. Now, that said, I understand not everybody can afford interfaces in this price range. And to be honest with you, not everybody needs an interface uh, in this particular price range. But I can tell you that, um, you know, one of the things about higher-end interfaces is they hold their value much, much better. Uh, they are typically supported much, much longer. You know, speaking of RME as an example, there's still RME Firefaces, Fireface 800s out there that came out, you know, several decades ago or pretty close to that. Um, and, and they're still being used today by people, and you can get great results. So uh, anybody watching this, I don't want you to think that you somehow need to shell out uh, the kind of money that these particular interfaces fall into. Um, but when you do, uh, you, you'll typically get what you pay for. Now you may wonder, how did I end up with an RME interface? Well, I decided to leave the Avid ecosystem after a couple of decades of complete frustration. Uh, it wasn't worth the money to me anymore. Um, so once I decided that, then I began my search for my next interface. RME, of course, was at the top of the list because I didn't feel like I, I really didn't need DSP any longer. I really hadn't needed it for quite some time. Uh, the thing about once you start using DSP, you get sucked in to actually think that you're going to need it forever, and, and technology kind of passes you by, and you may or may not be aware of it. So consider that if you're kind of you know tied into some DSP. There are, there are plenty of reasons out there why DSP is very helpful, uh, but not everybody needs it. I would argue probably most people don't need it, especially if you're at home. Um, so... My last interface prior to this was the Avid Carbon, and I'll be honest with you, I think that's an absolutely fantastic interface. I think the conversion on that is very, very, very good. Uh, I would argue that it's better than the HDIOs for sure. Uh, it is definitely in a premium class um, uh, conversion as it relates to interfaces. Now, there, there's, there's better, even more expensive conversion out there, but that comes at a higher price and, 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 and change and doesn't give you as many IOs typically. So, so anyway, I don't want to really get into that whole thing because that could be a, an endless, endless debate. Um, but I'll just say this, you know, it was a great interface with great conversion and was really honestly, the, in my opinion, the best conversion I had heard to date uh, of the ones I had experience with. Now, all the others were great, and, and I'm not going to say it's a huge difference, but it was a difference for sure. Um, and then, so when I decided to get away from that and really get away from Pro Tools altogether, then, then that caused me to start looking in other directions. And I really looked. I looked at the, um, at the Focusrite Red Series unit, specifically um, the 16 line. Uh, I was very intrigued by that, but it was very difficult to get. Um, and then, uh, I, you know, I considered quite a few others, but at the end of the day, I settled on RME. Now, you may ask, okay, Barry, why did you settle on RME? Well, hey, that's a great question. Um, let me first by saying RME has um, the greatest drivers known to man. There has not been one single interface company on the planet that has had more consistent, reliable drivers for both Windows and PC than RME, and that goes back decades. They are simply some the most reliable on the planet today, always have been, and I believe always will be. Uh, their interfaces are built like a tank. I mean like a tank. Um, you know, you, you, once you buy an interface of this caliber, you can get many, many, many years of use out of it, uh, and you will get nothing but flawless performance. 
Another thing, too, to consider, a lot of people really want to talk about, well, Barry, a lot of their stuff really relies on th uh, on USB and Thunderbolt's the way forward. Well, my next video is going to talk about that, uh, but I will tell you this. Um, you know, I connect mine via USB. Uh, I have an M1 Pro MacBook Pro that I connected to. I'm currently using New Window, um, and I've not had a single glitch whatsoever. It has performed flawlessly, not one single error, one single time. And so uh, I, I didn't expect that. I, I, like most people, were very hesitant of USB until I actually you know, really experienced it for myself. And so I just said, forget it. I don't need Thunderbolt. I'll just go USB. And so that's what I did. And mainly the reason for that is where I had the computer compared to where the interface was, I didn't have a long enough Thunderbolt cable. Uh, and so I used the, the USB cable that came with it, and I've been using it since. It's been flawless for me. You know, one of the things that the misconceptions about USB are the drivers. And like I said before, RME has the very best drivers on the planet today. Now, let's talk about conversion. Uh, as far as RME interfaces, modern RME interfaces that I can talk about, I can really only talk about the UFX Plus, which is what I'm using now. And I will tell you the conversion is on par with the Carbon. Uh, I would say maybe the carbon slightly better, but it, it, it's, I mean, that's really, really, really nitpicking. I mean, to the billionth degree to some degree. And, and so um, the, 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 the conversion of this particular interface is fantastic. And from what I understand, it's the same conversion from the baby face up to the UFX Plus, which are really your kind of your home studio kind of interfaces. The, the things below that, above that, are really meant for the, are designed to be in the professional use into network places, um, you know, whether it's broadcast or large recording facilities, uh, you know, where, whether you're in arenas or even live recording, so many other things where you've got to really get a lot of I.O. at one game given time and be able to do that either via Maddie or Dante. Um, and so, you know, that they're really designed for that. And so I, from memory, I think they've got four, um, four current interfaces, starting with the baby face, uh, going up to the UFX plus, and then the other two in between. And really the differences between them for the most part are IO. The conversion is the same on all of them. The build quality is the same on all of them. Um, they all work with total mix, and I'll talk about total mix in a minute. Um, but but they're they're all very powerful, powerful, powerful interfaces. You know, if, if some I get asked this question quite a bit, Barry, what what interface do you recommend if I only need you know three or four inputs? If I only need that, what interface do you recommend? Uh, if I'm in the, you know, 1000 to, you know, $1,300 range, and I always recommend the Babyface. It's the first one that comes to mind. I don't think it honestly has any real competition in that particular area. Uh, when you consider all of the things, you maybe pick one or two things that maybe some other interfaces have that you may find more compelling. I didn't say better. I said you may find more compelling Um but at the end of the day, when you're talking about it all in one, when you look at the whole package, I don't think there, there are better interfaces out there for the money uh, when you put all of this into consideration. Uh, again, they're supported on, on both Windows and Mac, unlike, you know, universal audio uh, interfaces. You know, they, they really do a terrible job of supporting Windows. So if you're on Windows, I, I don't even recommend you even consider that. Um, you know, and so, yes, there's some other interfaces out there that work on both platforms, but you really have got to look at the stability side of things. And, and again, you may get more bang for your buck, more features for that same price, but at the end of the day, it's not all things equal. And your interface is the heart and soul of your home studio. And I think a lot of consideration has to go into that. Now, specifically on the, on the UFX Plus, you know, it, it has 12 mic preamps. And I thought that was a brilliant idea on behalf of RME. You know, most interfaces come uh, in this particular price range. If they have mic preamps, uh, they come with eight microphone preamps. 
And, and, you know, I had a fella ask me a question the other day, you know, how many mics do I need to record a drum kit? Um, and, and so then I started, you know, thinking about that and, and explaining that to him. But at the end of the day, you can't do it with, you really can't do it properly, in my opinion. And eight is the bare minimum that you need, in my opinion, to record a drum kit, your average drum kit. Um, but, but to do that, you also need to be able to track and, 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 and get your scratch tracks down for bass and guitar. And so with a 12 uh, channel interface, you can do that and still have sufficient mic preamps for drum tracking, as well as get your bass and your guitar as that example goes. Um, your scratch tracks down, then once you get the drums recorded, you can go back and overdub the rest of the remaining parts. And I think it's the way most people work today uh, when they're working from home, if you're in a situation of recording drums. So having 12 mic preamps and one particular interface is quite, quite, quite compelling without having to add an additional microphone preamp via ADAT as an example. Keep in mind that when you add another preamp via ADAT, you're now reliant upon the conversion in that unit, so you're not getting the same conversion that your interface is. So if you go with the example and you're recording an additional eight channels and you get an Audient ASP 880 or 800 or one of those, um, you know, you're not going to get the conversion in the is okay in its price range, nothing wrong with it in its price range, but it's not going to be on the level of this. So there's some compromises that you make. The advantage of this is you can get it all down in one interface. So let's talk about microphone preamps. The preamps and RME interfaces are absolutely fantastic. That's one of the things that I liked about the Carbon, although I don't really use built-in mic preamps. I have quite a bit of selection of mic preamps that really cover the gamut here in my studio. But it's nice to have that flexibility, especially if you're doing a situation with remote recording. Oftentimes, I, I will help some friends out and do some things, and, and I'll take my interface and my computer with me and go to their space and track their drums as an example. And so I don't want to have to really undo everything I've got here because everything I have is mounted in my console back there for the most part. Um, I don't want to have to start disassembling that to take that stuff with me. So I'll use the core interface. And oftentimes if I'm tracking drums, you know, really to, for me, the most critical microphone preamps on a drum kit are going to be your kick and your snare mics. Those are going to be your most important part. But, but it's not dominant enough to where that's going to matter that much. Well, here's what I can say. The, my experience with the RME Fireface uh, UFX Plus is microphone preamps, which is the same microphone preamps that are in the other interfaces. There just aren't as many of them in the other three interfaces. Um, are absolutely great. They are clean. They are clear. The headroom is more than what you need. They're fantastic microphone preamps kind of best in class for an interface. And so I think that's super important, especially if you're even on more of a budget. Maybe you don't have much uh, outboard hardware gear, whether it be mic preamps or anything else like that. Um, you know, and, and you need to rely on the mic preamps built into your interface. There is a significant difference between the mic preamps on this and let's say something in the seven eight hundred dollar range. You're just you can't get apples to apples in those situations. And so you can record great music and great, great songs and everything on a lesser expensive interface. But it, obviously, if you're looking to up your game, you're looking to up it in many categories. So you're definitely with RME interfaces, you're without a doubt going to get it in the conversion side of things. And you're also going to get it in the built in microphone preamps. Not only are they usable, they can be go to in just about any situation and you can be confident and rely upon them. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about connectivity. And that's where when you get into one of the things that separates a UFX Plus from, uh, from their other interfaces is this one has built-in matting. And so that, that and I'll, I'll talk in a second about how I've got mine connected via Matty. For many, if not most of you, that's probably not something uh, that you need to consider. But if you're a, a hardware junkie like me and you like using outboard hardware in addition to your plugins, I use mine mainly for tracking. I don't use them that much for mixing, but mainly for tracking. 
And and so, you know, I like to be able to have that flexibility of doing that. And so uh, I added, as an example, via Maddie to my Fireface uh, UFX Plus, I added a Feral Fish Pulse 16 Maddie. And so that gives me an additional 16 um, analog inputs, um, inputs and outputs, so I can connect up all my various pieces of hardware. And the conversion on it is very good, especially considering the price. It's actually very good considering the price. And so I've got mine connected via MADI. Well, you could say, well, Barry, you could just connect that via ADAT. Um, I can connect that via ADAT, um, but I'm going to lose my ADAT ports. If I need further expandability for something else, I'm going to lose my ADAT ports. And so by connecting with Maddie, it's just one single duplex cable that is incredibly inexpensive. I think I bought mine on, on Amazon for like, you know, around 10 bucks or so. And so they're very inexpensive, and it's just one cable from from the from the Fireface to another to another input cable or Maddie connection on the Ferrofish Pulse. So those two especially are great, great, great combination, and they're both owned by the same parent company or marketed by the or distributed by the same parent company. And so there's a close relationship between the two. Of course, RME sells more expensive I/O expansion. Um, that is that is even on a much higher caliber than the Feral Fish Pulse, as an example. Uh, but it comes with a higher price, and so you know, for around you know, for around thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars, you can add sixteen I/O with one cable to your interface. And what that gives you on the on the UFX Plus, you have two sets of ADAT I/O. On the on the uh, Pulse 16, you have two sets of ADAT I/O. So not only do I keep both, so I have four sets of ADAT I/O for expandability, but I also have an existing uh, what is that 26 26 I/O. So I get 12 with the UFX Plus, and then I get uh, 16 with the uh, the Feral Fish Pulse. So. You've got that connectivity there, uh, so that's that's awesome. You also get the ability to um, connect MIDI devices, so that's all in one. You've got that built into it. That's really not that special, and it's really not that big of a deal. You could buy a MIDI I/O for pretty cheap, but you're just going to take up one more USB connection uh, on whatever you're connecting to. So you have limited connections. That's where that comes into play, you know, big time and everything. Um, and so, in addition to the 12 microphone preamps, you get eight um, quarter-inch balanced I.O. that you can use one or the other. So the others are line, and the others are mic preamp, and you can go back and forth or intermix interchangeably. And so that's quite flexible. All of, all of this can be controlled with a separate app that RME's been using for a long time called Total Mix. Total Mix is so powerful, it's, it's, it's really, it's kind of mind-bending what you can do with it. And, and I've been using this for four months, and I am still scratching the surface of fully understanding Total Mix. Now, if there's one beef I have with RME is that I think they've got probably the smartest people on the planet who are involved in audio. There's no doubt these guys literally are kind of like rocket scientists. And the brain power is off the charts, and that is on full display in total mix. It is the hardest thing on the planet to wrap your head around. It is so illogical from, from all other particular ways that we're used to of controlling I.O. with third-party GUIs. Um, that, that it, it's, 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 it's just kind of crazy. Okay. But once you start to get over that hump and getting, getting from that to that hump, and I will say, I honestly, RME, I'm a huge fan, but your videos suck. They don't really put it in what my mama always called cornbread English. Okay. I think I'm a pretty smart guy. And I'm a pretty techy guy. You know, I may be this old fart on the other side of the camera, but I, I kind of know my stuff. And so this stuff tend, doesn't tend to kind of go over my head. Um, but this one took me, it was just so different that it took me a minute to understand. And, and I'm still touching the surface of it. But each day goes by, I keep setting back and saying, wow, I cannot believe I can do this. I cannot believe I can do this all within this device 
without needing a patch bay or anything else. Now, I have patch bays back there. I'm beginning to think whether I really need them or not, but that's a separate discussion for another day. Um, but but it is so powerful. You know, I'll get, you know, just loop back alone is just unbelievable. And not everybody has a need for this. But let's say, for example, when I'm shooting a video and I'm doing something, let's say I'm playing something in New Window or Studio One or Pro Tools, and I'm demonstrating something for you guys, but I also need to be able to record my audio from the microphone uh, at the same time. Um, I, what I have to do is do the playback in one DAW and then record the mic, and then the sounds coming from that other DAW into the secondary DAB. So as an example, let's say I've got a session in New Window, right? I've got the mix going and maybe I'm, I'm using examples of hardware pieces and I'm going back and forth between various ones, just muting one channel versus the next. And of course, what's happening, what goes then is my stereo output is then routed out into Total Mix and I don't want to confuse you too much, but you basically can pick an unused set that is not even within the capabilities of your I.O., and you can route it to that output. So let's say, for example, I'm going to get, want to go to MADI 32. Now, keep in mind, I'm only using 16 channels of MADI with the pulse. I can pick MADI 32, 31, and 32, as, or 32 and 33 as an example for stereo pair. So I can route that, my output routed to that input on the total mix, and then pull up Studio One, have my microphone that's right there, uh, my microphone routed into Studio One, uh, you know, through a normal way, and then also create a secondary stereo track where I bring in the input of that particular stereo track from Maddie uh, 32 and 33. And so now what that's doing is recording what's coming out of Nuendo and then also my voice at the same time because I obviously can't record in the same DAW that I'm demonstrating because I'm hitting play and stop and rewind and all those things, and that would just shut my recording off, right? So a little feature like that is killer. So the way you can route things internally within Total Mix is off the charts. Now, I'm going to leave Total Mix alone there as an example. Well, I'm only going to go over one more thing because at some point I am going to start doing uh, really teachable videos on how to really understand and use Total Mix from a simpleton's perspective, okay? Probably like me and, and probably like you too, okay? Uh, or at least many of you because I think that's the one thing. That's the one thing when I caution people going into RME interfaces is Get yourself prepared because there's going to be a tremendous amount of learning to do with Total Mix. And I have many thoughts and many ideas on simple little things they could do to understand where you are from a visual perspective in Total Mix that RME should implement, in my opinion. But I'm going to talk about that in another video. One last thing, on the front of the UFX Plus, it has two headphone outputs, okay? So I want you to keep in mind, in those headphone outputs can be fed from independent mixes within Total Mix, okay? So I can create one headphone mix in Total Mix and have a separate headphone mix on the other headphone output. So as an example, I could have folks in another room just with a, you know, with a headphone extension cable into another room and they're tracking in there and I'm, let's say for example, I'm doing a drummer and a bassist who need to keep eye contact with each other, but they both obviously need to hear different things. Well, I can set both of them out there in another room and have them have headphones on and enable them to be able to track and communicate with each other while they're doing it and create totally independent headphone mixes while I'm listening here with my own monitor mix, of course, coming from my DAW. And so that alone saves you buying an additional headphone amp if you only need a couple of headphones. And today, because of the way people track, that's really all you need for the most part. Um, or, or you can get by with two or split one of them and say a bass player and a guitar player use the same one. Um, you know, you could do that as well. And so there's many different ways to go about it without having to buy a separate headphone system. So, the, you know, that's just one example of a way I've used it so far. Uh, that 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 you couldn't do with any other interface uh, that I'm aware of other than something with Total Mix. It is so powerful. You can do mixes upon mixes, a separate, you can have 50 different separate mixes if you want to, as long as you've got the ability to have an IO output for them. Um, 
you can do that in Total Mix all within all within a single uh, within a single interface, and that is incredibly powerful. And so you can do that no matter whether it's a baby baby fr baby face or or whether it's a UFX Plus or all their other interfaces. Total Mix comes on all of them and has for a very 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 long time, back to the time when many 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 moons ago. For probably about six months or so, I had a, a Fireface 800 that I used for remote tracking back then. Um, I don't remember it being as complex, but I, I remember it being somewhat difficult back then too. So, so anyway, RME, um, I, I think you probably need to get some simple people in there with you. And if they can't understand it just like that, that should tell you something that the way you're approaching approaching it um, is 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 for rocket scientists, not simple guys like this guy right here. And again, I think I'm pretty smart, but I don't I question that with Total Mix. Um, but but when back when it comes to um, you know additional features on the unit, it does have built-in DSP. Now, depending on all of them have built-in DSP. Uh, with compression and EQ, if you want to use that, just to be able to listen through those effects while you're tracking. Um, but it, when you get into the UFX series, that's when you get an additional reverb and a delay. Now, I'll be honest with you, they're sufficient for tracking, uh, but you would never use these. Simply are nowhere near good enough for for mixing. So if you need if you need to be able to have that, say for example a singer, you know, which is definitely one of those situations if you don't have outboard hardware that you're kind of patching in before it gets to the interface where you would do that. Um, you know, oftentimes you'd want to go through a compressor. And then, of course, most singers would like a reverb uh, for just to get a, a sense of vibe and, and feel for the song while they're tracking. And so um, it's nice to be able to have that feature and everything, especially especially if you're doing remote tracking and things like that. So anyway, so that's another great feature. These, thing, these units are probably the most feature-rich um, of anything in its class. Um, you know, the, the power, the flexibility – the build quality, the microphone preamps, the expandability, um, and then the connectivity, whether it's USB or Thunderbolt, you know, um, you, you get a lot to it. Now, I'm going to speak real quick about Thunderbolt and RME interfaces. The UFX Plus, from what I understand, I believe has a Thunderbolt 2 uh, port on the back of it and ha also has a USB 3 port on the back of it. Now, apparently, and again, don't quote me on this. You can do your own research. But I think Intel stopped support for the old Thunderbolt 2 connector. And so basically, uh, the UFX Plus with Thunderbolt and USB, uh, I expect to be discontinued. And then I don't expect RME to ever make another Thunderbolt device ever again. I think everything they're going to do going forward is USB. And... Most people have a misconception, especially if you're older like me and you've been doing this longer. There was certainly a time when you would never consider USB. Uh, it simply was not stable enough. You couldn't get the, the number of tracks in and out. The dropouts were horrible, but that was a long time ago. Today, USB, USB 3 and beyond is more than sufficient than what any of us, and I mean practically just about any of us, are ever going to need. We have this association with Thunderbolt in our minds, and I'll be honest with you, I've had it many, much, much of much of the last several dec uh, last decade or so when it came out that that was needed. Well, it's not needed. It's not needed at all. Okay. Uh, if you're having, if you're on a USB interface and you're having stability issues, it has nothing to do, a USB 3 interface or higher, uh, it has nothing to do whatsoever with the connection. It has to do with the drivers. And that's what it is more than anything else. Again, I've been using this since I got started on Apple Silicon as an example. So if I was going to have issues, you'd think that's where it would be. And, and I used it when they were still working out all the bugs and not everything was quite certified with that yet. And I simply have had not, not a single issue, not a single one. I don't think I've ever had an interface of any kind where I didn't have some, at least initial, uh, challenges with that I had to either tweak something I once tweaked. Of course, it's always fine. But but the, out of the box, bam, connect, go, no problem. Just a piece of cake. So uh, if you're considering RME interfaces, 
I'm here to tell you that you're making one of the best decisions you could ever make for your studio. And especially, especially, especially if you think your needs are going to grow where you need added expandability and flexibility, I highly recommend you consider a device with Maddie and Dante. I think we're going to see one or both of those really start to become prevalent in so many ways uh, in the home studio market, whereas they've been prevalent for a very long time, that as well as AVB, prevalent for a very long time in live situations, uh, as well as major studios where they're sharing uh, uh you know, interfaces and devices across multiple rooms and multiple platforms uh, and things like that. And so uh, I, I think that is the that is the future. And I think that we're only going to see that grow more and more in unique and creative ways that we haven't seen before. So we're not having, you know, this idea of using snakes out the window, out, out, out the window, you know, um, you know, especially if you've been in a live situation and you have your own stuff, you know, you're typically taking a board and you're running a 16 channel or 24 channel snake out to the, out to the, um, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, stage, <laughs> yeah, live, the stage, the, what do you call it? <laughs> anyway, to the stage is an example where you connect all your microphones. Now you can do that with a simple cable, one simple cable. Okay. Have your, have your, your microphone preamps over there, connect one cable back to your digital mixer, uh, and you're good to go. And so there's so much flexibility. Uh, this unit also gives you the ability, UFX plus also gives you the ability to track without a computer. And so if you're, you're recording in a band, you're playing in a band and you want to be able to track, oftentimes you could take that, especially if you have a relationship with whoever's mixing you at that particular stage, uh, at that particular location, and maybe they've got, um, you know, maybe they've got house sound as an example. You can ask them if you could patch in uh, and come out of their board and go into your interface and be able to get your tracks that way. So that's an option as well, quite powerful. Um, so anyway, um, so I think you can tell, I think it's pretty obvious at this point, I love RME. I love RME, RME Fixed Automix. Okay, but I love RME, and I don't think I can really honestly recommend another interface that one is going to hold its value, two is not likely to be discontinued and replaced every two years, a.k.a. Uh, I won't mention them, but we know who you are out there. Um, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about it. You, you know, they build the conversion solid enough at a high enough grade that before they do a next device with, with even more improved conversion, it's going to be a long gap. They hold their value. Just go on reverb and check for yourself if you can even find one. That's another telling thing. Now, the UFX Plus, you can't even find it. You cannot find it anywhere. Out of stock, I think the soonest I think any vendors have it is January, February of next year. You can't find it. Now, some of that's probably due to the chip shortage, but that was the case before the pandemic, for the record, okay? And so uh, when you can't find a particular device, that should tell you something. Nobody's selling them. And I challenge any one of you, I challenge anybody out there, if you can find somebody who's an RME user, see if you can find them to have a negative thing to say. One negative thing. I don't have one. I've never had an interface in my life, in my entire life, and I'm an old fart that I could say that to Okay, with the exception of Army, I've not had any, any, any challenges. Okay, and I don't expect to. All right. So if you like things I talk about on this channel, do me a favor, hit that like, that subscribe, and that notification. Help me grow the channel. Really appreciate it. Uh, but until next time, hope everyone, if you have a great day. Bye bye.